If it happens, the fall of liberal democracy in our own time will not look as it did in the 1920s or 1930s. But it will still require a new elite, a new generation of clerks, to bring it about. The collapse of an idea of the West, or of what is sometimes called the Western liberal order, will need thinkers, intellectuals, journalists, bloggers, writers, and artists to undermine our current values and then to imagine the new system to come. They may come from different places. In Benda's original definition, the clerks included ideologues of the right as well as the left. Both are still with us. An authoritarian sensibility is unquestionably present in a generation of far-left campus agitators who seek to dictate how professors can teach and what students can say. It is present in the instigators of Twitter mobs who seek to take down public figures, as well as ordinary people, for violating unwritten speech codes. It was present among the intellectuals turned spin doctors of the British Labour Party who prevented any challenge to Jeremy Corbyn's leadership, even as it became clear that Corbyn's far-left agenda would be rejected by the country. It was present among the Labour activists who first denied and then downplayed the anti-Semitism that spread within the party, too. But although the cultural power of the authoritarian left is growing, the only modern clerks who have attained real political power in Western democracies, the only ones operating inside governments, participating in ruling coalitions, guiding important political parties, are members of movements that we are accustomed to calling the right. They are, it is true, a specific kind of right, one that has little in common with most of the political movements that have been so described since the Second World War. British Tories, American Republicans, East European anti-communists, German Christian Democrats, and French Gaullists all come from different traditions, but as a group they were, at least until recently, dedicated not just to representative democracy, but to religious tolerance, independent judiciaries, free press and speech, economic integration, international institutions, the transatlantic alliance, and a political idea of the West. By contrast, the new right does not want to conserve or to preserve what exists at all. In continental Europe, the new right scorns Christian democracy, which used its political base in the church to found and create the EU after the nightmare of the Second World War. In the United States and the United Kingdom, the new right has broken with the old-fashioned, Burkean, small-c conservatism that is suspicious of rapid change in all its forms. Although they hate the phrase, the new right is more Bolshevik than Burkean. These are men and women who want to overthrow, bypass, or undermine existing institutions to destroy what exists. This book is about this new generation of clerics and the new reality they are creating beginning with a few whom I know in Eastern Europe, and then moving to the different but parallel story of Britain, another country where I have deep ties, and finishing with the United States, where I was born, with a few stops elsewhere. The people described range from nativist ideologues to high-minded political essayists. Some of them write sophisticated books. Others launch viral conspiracy theories. Some are genuinely motivated by the same fears, the same anger, and the same deep desire for unity that motivates their readers and followers. Some have been radicalized by angry encounters with the cultural left or repulsed by the weakness of the liberal center. Some are cynical and instrumental, adopting radical or authoritarian language because it will bring them power or fame. Some are apocalyptic, convinced that their societies have failed and need to be reconstructed, whatever the result. Some are deeply religious. Some enjoy chaos or seek to promote chaos as a prelude to imposing a new kind of order. All of them seek to redefine their nations, to rewrite social contracts, and sometimes to alter the rules of democracy so that they never lose power. Alexander Hamilton warned against them. Cicero fought against them. Some of them used to be my friends.